<laughs> Let me tell you a story. His story is an angelic one, and his tales are to be remembered for centuries. Originating in the great lands of Northern Europe, they have now spread across the earth and into our own home. In 1801, the world was blessed with the greatest folk teller of all time, Walter Edward Thomas. He has occasionally been confused with the brothers Grimm. It is true they had written many stories, but none of theirs can be compared to those of Mr. Thomas. He was a very interesting man, and some people would even swear he had mystical powers. You may already know him by one of many pseudonyms. The first of these given names, the Oliluque, which has Danish origins meaning close eyes. To hear his tales was a great honor. Oftentimes, the townspeople would call upon him to aid them on restless nights or when they had an unruly child who would resist sleep. His tales were known to put anyone to sleep, but for little children who had problems falling into a slumber, longer stories were necessary. If you were good, he would show you dreams beyond your wildest imaginations. But for those who were bad, a night of sleep with no dreams at all was their fortune. Although they were never harmed, being robbed of their dreams completely was an act that felt like punishment. It was said that after you called upon him, he would show himself to you. His tall stature, lengthy arms, and seamless movements captivated his audience with the first glance. He was neatly dressed, wearing a long flowing coat that could change colors with his moods. A pointed nightcap upon his head made some call him a wizard. His white curly beard was very long and soft, and could be compared to the touch of a goose feather. He carried with him a crooked cane carved from an old oak branch, although he had no issues walking. Slung over his shoulder was a small canvas sack. One fakler variation includes an hourglass. His eyes looked very dark, almost as if there was an empty void of hollowed sockets. This caused so many of his listeners to become mesmerized by the darkness within his glare. It has been said that he would sprinkle magical dust from his knapsack upon your head before telling you a tale of wonder and make-believe. His deep, dark voice was calming and appealed to his bedtime stories. Children would be found in the morning with sand over their eyelids and crust in the corner of their eyes, thus giving him his better-known nickname, The Sandman. When they woke, they were filled with energy, but more importantly, they had many wonderful and magical stories of the dreams they had to share with their friends. He was a very peaceful man who loved all the town's children. He did not wish to inflict any pain or harm upon them or cause any fears either. He simply wanted to help them sleep. He knew he had a gift, but had no children of his own to share his stories with. Children have always had problems falling asleep, mostly because they want to be grown. They're afraid to miss out on anything exciting, so they stay up as long as possible to enjoy any delights they may experience when the sun goes down. Many little boys and girls entertain themselves with shadow puppets from the illumination of street lanterns shining through their bedroom windows. Some hold conversations with their favorite stuffed animals or make blanket tents in bed. Some little boys raised small wooden toy cars under the covers that they had snuck into bed. So the Sandman tailored all his stories to each individual child, with each child's interest in mind, and made their dreams magical. His stories were intended to help young minds fall asleep and fall into a deep, well-rested slumber. Much time was taken to customize each tale, and he was sure to never visit the same person twice. It was only children that he visited, however, 
but adults in dire need of his assistance would also receive a visit. Unlike children, who feared they missed out on something interesting, adults fall victim to stress, anxiety, and insomnia. Their nights are not filled with play either, but worry and doubt fill their heads, making it too difficult to fall asleep on their own. But it would only take one visit from the Sandman to find a peaceful sleep for the rest of their days. He has been well known for centuries, but no one really knows what happened to him. Although his origins can be traced to the 1800s in Europe, mysteriously, there is no record of his death. But his tales live today. The legend remains. Whenever a young child struggles to fall asleep at night, simply call upon one of his many names. Surely, he will arrive in this mysterious fashion to help little ones drift away to dreamland, or, if you are naughty, he will send you restful nights with no dreams at all, ever again. Now, it's time for you children to go to sleep. Don't fight it, or I will need to call upon him. I closed my children's bedroom door and made my way upstairs to get ready for bed when I saw the silhouette of a tall figure standing near my bedroom window. Instinctively, I knew who the shadow belonged to. Have you come for me? I have not called upon you. Lay down and let me tell you a story. You see, as a young man, I was a teller of many tales, not just bedtime stories. But later, I learned to give the people exactly what they asked for. <laughs> Long ago, before I was given any nicknames or assigned any magical powers, I was a simple man with a passion for storytelling. Many say that days are long, but for me, it was the darkness that felt endless. I tried many things to fill my empty nights, but vivid tales filled my head, so I spent many long nights perfecting my craft. But it was worth it, because people would gather from all across the lands just to hear my tales. I brought pure joy to many, especially the children. Even the most energetic toddlers would sit motionless and listen intently as I took their imaginations on a journey. I wanted my name to be known in every home and with the help of my little listeners in their own fantasies, soon my name was one that would never be forgotten. They created wild accounts for me. They once said I flew into town on a massive hot air balloon arriving back from the moon. To them, I was magical. It wasn't long before they began to ask their parents to repeat my stories to them before bed. My tales were told to so many girls and boys to help them fall asleep. Kids became so full of wonder and imagination. Their interpretations and evolutions of my readings allowed them to realize the power they had within their own mind. They learned to believe in anything. They were creative. They became dreamers. I was so proud of them and the influence I had. But that's also when all the misfortune started. You see, there was one man who was not at all fond of what he deemed a distraction to his daughter. He became outraged when she spoke of me, my fictions, or any time she drifted off into a daydream. Alone in her room at night, she would whisper my stories to herself. So, her father made her an hourglass to set upon her windowsill. If she was not asleep when the last drop of sand fell, extreme punishment came her way. He complained to other parents, telling them what a bad influence I had become on their children, convincing them that I was evil. I was loved by many but extremely hated by the few who believed that my words were the devil's spell. Hourglasses began to be put up in windows all across my village. As I walked the streets at night, I could hear the children whispering my name, 
wishing to hear a bedtime story. Unable to resist being desired, I began sneaking into the rooms of the children who were brave enough to call out for me at night. I told them stories, tailored to them, and stole those stupid hourglasses from their windows. I made sure never to visit a child more than once for fear of being caught. I went unnoticed until one fateful night. The night little Mary Beth went missing. Oh, the townspeople did not like that one bit. But I was never to blame. I had nothing to do with her so-called disappearance or the stories she had shared about me. She was an intelligent blue-eyed sweetheart with auburn pigtails. Too smart for her own good, if you ask me. It seems she was telling people about me visiting the town's children at night, which was bad enough, but she added a creative twist to her stories of my visits. The sad part is, I trusted her. I thought she was a good kid, but her imagination got the best of her and she began to tell the stories of things I would never do. I would have never hurt a child the way she said I did. I can never forgive her. She is the reason the townsmen came after me. It seems when they couldn't find her, they came looking for me. Her lies are the reason my eyes were torn from their sockets. They even mocked me as they did it. You don't need to see when you have an imagination as twisted as yours. Who needs to see reality when you live in your own fantasies? They laughed at me. I don't know if they even believe Mary Beth's lies or if they were just looking for a reason to silence me for good. You want to know what's worse? They tied me to a pole and had all of the children throw stones at me. I loved and adored all those children and they turned their backs on me. Not one of them stood up for me. Not one. And it was their parents who brought the children to see me in the first place. But they all at once shunned me. They left me tied up, bruised and bloody for days. I could smell my own flesh rot. Every time I heard footsteps, I prayed for it to be a wild animal to come and end my miserable suffering. But it was just more children coming to stone me and laugh in my face. How quickly they had turned on me. I will never forget their betrayal. Five nights came and passed. I could feel the end nearing. And then I heard a familiar voice. It was Mary Beth. I'm sorry, Mr. Thomas. It seems you're not the only one with a creative imagination. Now, let me tell you a story. When you are dead and gone, it will be me who everyone comes to. You see how many followers I have already? And then she laughed. Right in my ear, she giggled a sinister, evil laugh and placed an hourglass in my hand. With my last bit of strength, I clutched it tight and shattered it in my hand. I was the teller of many tales. I helped little ones fall asleep. Many gathered to hear my stories. What happened? How could my life end this way? These were the questions I asked myself as I took my last breath. Five days. Five days is what my life cost. But somehow, I was granted a gift of life once more, if that's what you want to call this state that I'm in now. Somewhere between life and death. Perhaps my gift would be better called revenge. Don't you know that even after they killed me, they called upon me to help their little ones fall asleep? The nerve of these people who were blinded by lies and then chose to blind me. And so now, I blind them. The first to feel my vengeance was that sweet little Mary Beth. You should have seen her face when she saw me lurking in the corner of her bedroom that night. But you really 
should have seen her face after I held a red hot metal plate to her eyes. It seems her parents believed she went mad when she told them it was me. My death has become a blessing and a curse. It seems I can live out my wildest imaginations and not a soul will ever believe it was me. Although I may have lost my mortal body, I have lived on for centuries. People continue to share my stories. They have been retold and rewritten in many different languages under many different names. I've been called Old Lukoi, the devil. I've been called a demon in Dutch, Latin, French, and Greek. I've even been called a ghost, a spirit, and even some kind of entity that was never laid to rest properly. Hell, somehow I magically grew knives for fingers and was burned alive. Hmm, I can't recall that fella's name though, and I have no idea how that came to be. A game was even created in my name. A game. Look at me. Do I look like somebody to play with? I always wanted people to remember my name. And now I have the gift of eternity to ensure no one will forget it. I am the Sandman. I have the gift to put anyone to sleep. And if that is your request, I will do exactly that. I told you, I give the people exactly what they ask for. But sometimes, I make my own judgments. And let me get one thing straight. My power does not come from an hourglass. Let it be known that it is simply a figure to represent the beginning of the devastation those people caused me and to themselves. You were correct to say that the children's eyes are sometimes found with sand sprinkled all over them. Let that be a reminder to you and anyone else who hears of my unfortunate fate that the same man is still here and I'm waiting to be called on. And when you call upon me, I put your little unruly bastards to sleep. Or let's just say anyone really. Then I take what's due. It's only fair to take what's owed to me for my services, right? So I do just that. What's the price you are willing to pay for a good night's rest? What are you willing to do to have your children sleep through the night? The most precious thing that humans have is the ability to imagine and dream. I was once told that you don't need your eyesight for that, but still, I want what was taken from me. You too will know what that's like soon enough. Now, rest your eyes and fall asleep.